Welcome to the Amazing Clocks Podcast on the Black Love Podcast Network. My name is Anthony Clark. And I'm Melanie Clark. And we are the, the Amazing, Amazing Clocks. Clarks. We're both award-winning certified life and love coaches and a husband and wife duo that have been coaching together for 22 years. And we've been happily married and passionately in love for 30 years. They call us the Amazing Clocks because we empower people to live amazing lives. And welcome to our podcast and our love revolution. We are creating a love revolution to help people love themselves and each other more. We need more love in this universe. So we'll be talking about ideas and concepts to help you love yourself and each other more. That's right. And today, on today's show, we got a pretty juicy topic Ooh, yes. that I'm sure people will enjoy. Yes. And that topic is... We are going to be talking about infidelity. We're going to be talking about cheating. Why people cheat? Mm. What's actually going on? Why do they do mm. it? Um, and we're just going to have a little discussion about it. We actually had um, one of our Instagram followers ask us to talk about this because obviously it's something that she's dealing with in her life. So we want to give some perspective on this topic. That's right. So it's going to be a great show. Um, but before we jump into the main topic, yeah. it's time for catching up with the Clarks. Yes. How you been, baby? How's your week been? I have been doing well. I had a little bit of a cold, but I use colds as a way to grow and expand. So I do a lot of spiritual work. I do yes, a lot of reading. Do. <laughs> yes, I do like do. I go into a deep dive. It's like, ooh, catharsis <laughs> time. All right, let's go deep dive. Um, yeah. So I'm not mad at it. I got some rest and mm -hmm. I'm actually feeling pretty good on the other side of it. Yeah. Grateful. Good job. Uh, you. Yeah, you do. You do take advantage <laughs> of being sick. You make the most of it, you know. Thanks, man. And I appreciate it because you don't mm -hmm. sit around whining. You're just like, well, let me go. Sit out in the sun and let me go. Read a book. Read a book. Let me go. So you make the best of it. Meditate. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Good Thank job. Thank you. My week was actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. It was pretty good overall. There was something that happened that was pretty cool. And you were with me. We were at Costco. Oh. <laughs> and yes. while we were at Costco and we had our mask on. Yes. And our shades on. <laughs> and this. A little lady, undercover. Yeah. And this, this, this lady came up to us. And she was staring at first and I was like, okay, what is she doing? And she's like, hi, you guys, the Clarks. And I'm thinking like, wait a minute, are we going to get served papers or something? <laughs> in Costco. In Costco. Right. So I was like a little hesitant at first, like, uh, right. who are you? Right. And she was like, you're the Clarks, right? We go, yeah, why? She goes, I just want to come meet you guys. I love you guys. I saw you guys on Black Love. You're my favorite couple. And I love how honest you were. And I saw you in line. It was like... I got to go over there and meet them. And I want to take a photo with you guys. And I mean, and it was adorable, but I was amazed at how did she know that was us? We had a mask <laughs> on and shades on. Right. But, you know, that goes back to our um, topic that we did on entanglement. Yes. So they can go check that one out if you yeah. don't know anything about that. Yeah. She, she felt our energy. Yes. She felt our energy. It was so sweet. Cute. It was, it was very cute. And that's happened to us since we've been on the show. Mm -hmm. A couple times. A couple times. And I enjoy the gratitude that people have. Yeah. And how we impacted them. And, well, they're yeah. spreading love. They're, they're bringing it back to us, right? We're attracting it back. We're putting love out and they're coming back and giving love back to us. So it's law of attraction. Of course, people are going to give us love because we're giving love. Right. So she was super sweet and just lovely. And when we took the picture with us, she just gave us a big hug. And I was just like, oh, this is so nice that we've impacted her and mm -hmm. helped her to feel more love in the world. It was awesome. I agree. And you know, doing what we do, mm -hmm. and as our career grows, I like the attention. I just don't think I'd like to get to the point where it's like, paparazzi and no. people out you can't show you be out in public no uh, no that, no no i'm good i'm good <laughs> yeah. on that yeah i'm good on that yeah. too but i am grateful and i'm appreciative for the love yes me too that was awesome yes it was yes it was so that was the, that was the highlight of the week huh that was one of the interesting points yes but people if you see us out and about and you want to come say hello we are more than happy to spread the love to meet you so don't be shy yes the paparazzi, stay away. Yeah, we don't want the paparazzi. Uh, <laughs> all right, good stuff. Are you ready to talk about our topic? Let's do it. Okay. So um, this is something that comes up a lot. And our perspective on this is probably not going to be most people's perspective. So mm -hmm. buckle up, people. Let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. So 
infidelity, cheating. First of all, I want, I'm going to talk about you, Anthony. Okay. One of the things that I just love, love, love about our relationship is that you have never given me any reason to fear that you would cheat on me. Right. I have this level of peace and confidence that people who've experienced cheating and mm-hmm. who have had infidelity in their relationships don't experience. So I just want to acknowledge that. And I want to acknowledge that you have this saying, and I love it. And for the men out there listening, you need to burn this in your brain, write it down, put it on your fridge, put it in your car, <laughs> uh, <laughs> make an audio, make a video, something, I but you need to going. download it. And your famous saying is, choose peace of mind over peace of ass. Always and choose peace of mind always over peace of ass. Always choose peace of mind yeah. over peace of ass. And mm-hmm. gentlemen, well, women too, women cheat too. You really need to write this down because right. you've got to ask yourself, is it worth it? And why you're doing it? Why right. are you... Why are you putting yourself in a position to possibly ruin your whole life, hurt the person that you care about, uh, lose your family? Like, why would people put themselves in that position? Right. Let's talk about it. What do you think, Anthony? You know, (laughs) I'll talk from, you know, from my perspective. Okay. I wasn't always as enlightened when it came to that subject. Mm Mm-hmm. So in my earlier relationships, right. there I was not always faithful. What? And yes, yes. And this is when, you know, like 2019. Mm-hmm. And what I realized was that at first it was like oblivious. Mm-hmm. But then after a while, it's like the guilt, you're covering your tracks, mm-hmm. the lies, right. the manipulation, you're covering your tracks. Right. <laughs> you got to remember. Yeah. You forget. It's work. It's a job. You get caught. It's yeah. And after a while, it's like, it, it wasn't worth it. Mm-mm. Once I realized that, then it was like, I'd rather just be honest. Mm-hmm. And without that peace of mind, life is not worth living. There's nothing worth giving that up to me. At the, most, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. So for me, it was just like, why am I doing it? And if I need to do it, then why am I in a relationship? Yes. And so that's when I realized that never always choose peace of mind over peace of ass. And when I see guys doing that now that are cheating mm-hmm. and just to watch this, the pain and suffering that they're going through, it's like, really, is that worth it for some coochie? <laughs> right. Is it? <laughs> no. From my perspective, no, no. They going to learn today, but. Right. but but people, like you were saying, they, they I think they, they, well, I know they cheat for different reasons. Right. Sometimes it's because they want just to explore new experiences Mm -hmm. and they're afraid to be honest with their partner about it. Uh, Sometimes they're looking, trying to fill a void Mm -hmm. inside of them. Yeah. And they think that that's going to fill a void, but it doesn't. Yeah. And so over the years we've, you know, dealt with it a lot and it's various reasons why people cheat. So give me your perspective. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to speak from experience. Um, I have, cheated in relationships Mm -hmm. myself, not proud of it, but you know, that's part of growth. We're all learning and growing. And the reason that I did it was lack of self-esteem. I thought that I needed more attention than the partner that I had. And I thought the more attention that I got and the more, I'm just going to be very honest, the more sex I got, that it was filling that void, Mm -hmm. that it was giving me the illusion of being good enough, of being validated, right? Mm -hmm. Like someone wants me, someone wants to spend time with me, someone wants to make love with me, I'm good enough. And the relationship that I was in stopped feeding that void. 
And that's what's always going to happen, right? The mm -hmm. relationship in the beginning, like we've talked about, is limerence, gives you the illusion, it's filling the void. But then those feelings are going to go away. And that's what happened. Like the chemicals in my brain that made me feel bonded to that person, that made me feel in love with them, started to go away. And that empty feeling made me feel like I needed to fill it with something else. And at the time, I had a lot of negative things going on in my life because I had really low self-esteem, mm -hmm. which was my vibration, which means I was attracting everything to match my vibration. And so having those, um, those extra people in my life or talking to someone else, I was getting fed new energy and it was giving me the illusion that it was filling my void. Mm -hmm. But I walked away from it with so much guilt and it ended up actually making me love myself less at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It was an illusion. Mm -hmm. It was like a trick, right? It was like, it was like when you're hungry and you see a cake, right? And you're like, oh, that cake looks so good. I want to eat it. And you start eating the cake. And then after a while, the cake makes you sick. You're like, there's no yeah. substance there. I, it didn't actually take away my hunger. It made me thirsty. It made me mm. fat. <laughs> and that's the, the emptiness, right? That feeling of like, that was not satisfying. And so I think what happened, and I learned from it. I was like, ooh, mm -hmm. I'm not doing that again. Like that doesn't work. I need to go within and look at myself in my life and look for what I need as an individual and stop using other people to make me feel good about me. And that was one of the things that really inspired me to go and start doing therapy. I started going to therapy, started dealing with some of my um, codependency issues, dealing mm -hmm. with issues that I had being the adult child of an alcoholic. Like I just had a lot of issues and I was using other people to fill that void for me. And so I know that's why a lot of people do it. They're, they believe that their partner should be giving them something to make them feel good all the time. And when the partner can't do it all the time, then they look for someone else to do it. And that all those, you know, those chemicals mm -hmm. start again, excitement, right. and the taboo and all that energy starts flowing and it feels good in the beginning. But again, it's like the cake. It looks good in the beginning, right. but it goes bad by the time you get to the end. I think that for me, because I've had so many experiences mm -hmm. and I made it a point when I was younger to have as many sexual experiences, many dating, as many dating experiences as possible. Mm -hmm. I feel like I got my, my fill of it. Right. So when they say the grass is green on the other side, mm -hmm. I've been in the grass. I mowed the grass. <laughs> I grew the grass. I smoked the grass. So, <laughs> so I know what's on the other side. Yes. And I know what's on this side. Right. And so I could compare the two and go like, okay, no, I know what's on the other side. And what I have now on this side is what I need and what I want. Right. So it's when what a lot of people, I think that they don't cheat because of repercussions. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid of, you know, what is gonna happen if I do, I'm gonna lose the family, I'm gonna lose the house, I'm gonna lose. Right. And if that does it, great, whatever. But I think on a what's even better, if you can do it from a place of, I don't cheat because I choose to not. Yes. Do it as opposed to. I, I'm I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, I don't want to get a whooping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be good. I'll be good. I don't right. want to get in trouble. Right. No, I I agree a hundred percent. Um, but I I think being in a relationship and doing your own individual work as well as your work as a couple, learn again, learning about yourself, loving yourself, loving each other, learning to accept each other, allowing right. each other to be who you need to be. All of that yumminess, fighting to grow, all of those mm -hmm. good things, right? All of those things make you not want to cheat. They make you mm -hmm. want to be with that person because you're you're growing and you're growing individually and you're sharing that growth with someone. Mm -hmm. It's when you don't do that work that when and it's both of you, it's not just one person. If you don't do that work, that's where there's the opportunity for someone to go astray. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I want to make really clear, and, and I think it's just so important for people to hear, a lot of times when you have a partner that cheats, 
the person that got cheated on internalizes that and personalizes it and says, you did this to me. You betrayed me. You hurt me. You did this to me. And I want to give you another perspective. They betrayed themselves. They Mm. did this to themselves. They have to live with themselves. It is their deficit. It is their lack of connection. It is their lack of self-love that caused this, not you. It is Mm -hmm. not your job to fill your partner's void. Right. It is your job to fill your own void. And if you are a dater and you are dating, you want to make sure you choose partners that have self-esteem, that are know how to fill their own void, that are living a happy life. And then you guys can share that. But it is hurtful. They get so hurt, but the hurt comes from the meaning that they're giving it, right? They give mm-hmm. cheating the meaning of you're doing this to me and you're doing this to me on purpose. And we've worked with a lot of couples that have dealt with infidelity, and it is never about the person that is being cheated on. Mm-hmm. And, I, true. and I also want to offer this, that if you are married or in a committed relationship and someone is cheating, there is huge possibility to get on the other side of it. We've seen so many couples deal with infidelity and work through it and then actually come out better and more in love on the other side because it shined the light, right? It shined the light on that person's lack of ability to fill their own void. And it focuses on them filling themselves up and dealing with their self-esteem or their need for attention, like whatever the need is of the reason why they did it. It comes out in the open. And I think cheating is just a way to try to figure out what they need and just doing it with another person. It it becomes like a wake up call for the couples. Yeah. And some of you guys that are listening to this right now and you're like, come on, man. You don't, come on, you don't think about Jeet when a girl, you see all those beautiful women around. Come on, man, you lying. He being fun. Okay, I'm going to be real. <laughs> they think you're doing the, where the bitches yeah, are. Where the, yeah. <laughs> right? Do I find other women attractive? Yeah, I what? do. What? I do. Wait a minute. I thought you were only attracted to me. Wait, did I say I do? Yes. Oh, my God. What that? <laughs> I, tri- I slipped. I, <laughs> I of course do. you do. I do. Women are beautiful. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. Yes. And so I see women that are beautiful. Mm-hmm. spirits but, but it doesn't go like oh she's beautiful i gotta get at that yeah it's like oh look at that cute nice okay <laughs> keep it moving <laughs> right. end of it i appreciate it mm-hmm. and i keep it moving and i learned that a long time ago as well once i started to choose peace of mind mm-hmm. over peace of ass right what i realized that in the past when i did especially when i was younger when i did cheat it was part of it was the thrill mm-hmm that's what I was saying, like the energy, yeah, like the, 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 the taboo, the thrill the of it, can sneaking, I, around. sneaking around. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, I compared it to like a hunter. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go hunting and hunting was the thrill. Yeah. It was exciting. And I kill an animal and then mm-hmm. I'd kill it and bag it and take it. And that was the process. Mm-hmm. But then uh, once. Okay, wait a minute. Are you referring to women as like, you going to bag them and tag them? No. Okay, good. Never do that. <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, what I realized then is that you know what? Is it really the, sh- the shooting that I liked? Mm-hmm. And I realized, no. It was knowing that I could mm. if I wanted to. Yes. So it was like the hunter now would take my rifle and I'd point it and be like, ooh, Line I got precise. you, I got you. Yeah. But nope, I'm not going to pull the trigger, but I could have gotten you. Mm-hmm. And it was like that still that same excitement. Like, oh, that was fun. Yeah. Oh, I got so you don't have to actually shoot it. Mm-hmm. Just know you can. I don't know if this statement I'm going to make is true or not, but Uh-oh. I'm going to make it anyway. Since more men cheat than women. <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> Supposedly. Supposedly. I don't know if that's a true statement. So I'm just, yeah. that's my disclaimer. Okay. But that's kind of, you know, the general consensus. Do you think that there is a physiology reason or a physical reason that men tend to do it more than women? Do you think it's cultural, societal, mindset? What do you think it is? We want to, Uh, uh, women always want to understand men more. And you're uh, you're a guy, so tell us from the guy perspective. I do think that with men, Mm -hmm. a a big part of it is physiology. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of guys, that's why they're afraid to actually get into a relationship 
So I'll see the younger guys now where there's a lot of them now that won't get into a committed relationship because they're like, no, Mm -hmm. I want sex. I want sex with a bunch of different women. I do not want to lock it down with one woman. Right. And people get up, some women get upset with them, but I respect that. Mm -hmm. Be honest. Even with the women, be honest. If that's what you want, there's nothing wrong with it, but just be honest about it. I think they are being honest. I think they're called F boys. If I am correct on the terminology. Look at you. Look at you. Melanie. Up on the game. So they are starting to be Good more job. honest. Yeah. And women are starting to be more honest too. Women are starting right. to be like, uh, I don't know the name for women though. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know the term to describe women. Right, but, but I, I get know your point. Uh, women are starting to say too that I I want freedom. I want multiple partners. Polyamory well, is couples, becoming. Yeah, couples are saying that. You yeah. know, more common because couples are saying they want open relationships. They want, right. So I do, I do think for men, that is a, a stronger influence than with women. Mm-hmm. And with men, their fear is that, you know, I'm going to get married and then that's going to be just one vagina mm-hmm. that I'll have to have for the rest of my life. Right. And that scares the shit out of a lot of men. Yeah. And especially if they haven't had a lot of experiences mm-hmm. before that. Right. I think because of the amount of sperm cells that we create. Mm-hmm. It's always on our minds. Our penis is on the outside of us. Mm-hmm. So it's always blowing in the wind and rubbing against our pants. So we always have that awareness. You have awareness of that it it's constantly. There. Yeah. yeah. And the natural tendency, I think it is the instinct of men to do that. Right. Because if you really think about it, the whole relationships, um, monogamous relationships, oh, okay. that was man-made. Mm-hmm. That was a creation. Right. Even marriage, that was a creation. That was a man-made. Right. Throughout most of history, it didn't exist, even within the church. The church was against it in the mm-hmm. beginning. So it's like our natural way of being, we've altered that mm-hmm. and created kind of a synthetic reality. So are you saying monogamy is not actually natural? We're forcing ourselves to be monogamous. But as human beings, I think that we have a lot of, that's one of our gifts that we can ex- expand right. and grow. So we're not animals where it's like, this is just my instinct. Mm-hmm. I have to go through it. My instinct might be to to kill. Oh. But that doesn't mean because it's my instincts that, that it's okay. It. I'm going to run around okay. killing yeah. things, you know. Whew, but, glad to hear that. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> real glad to hear right. that one. <laughs> right. I'm going to sleep really but, well but, tonight, babe. <laughs> yeah. But you get, you get my point. You'll no, sleep, I, I, get, well. I get your point 100%. But you know that the thing about like men having their genitalia externally and them having, you know, millions of sperm in their body, it has to affect you and how you move about. Just like for women, what goes on with our genitalia, everything's internal and we have one egg. So our inner, our sexual energy is different than your sexual energy. Mm-hmm. And so I think that actually it does create a little bit of a disconnect and a lot of women want sex less than men and our bodies do all kinds of stuff when it Mm -hmm. comes to sex. And I don't know if a lot of men understand this, what around our period, there are certain times in our cycle that we're going to really want sex because that's when we're most, most fertile. There will be times in the month where we don't want you to touch us at all because our body is preparing to become fertile. As we age, our hormones kick in and affect our ability to be sexual and want sex sex and have sex sexual thoughts. So our bodies do play a huge role in it. And it's interesting to me that we have created this narrative that when someone goes outside of a relationship, it's because they're betraying the other person. It really is about their body. It's about their mind. It's about their self-esteem. It's about them. And I think it could really change how people move past that experience in relationship if they could change the story about it being a personal attack on the person that they do it to. And it doesn't feel good. I know that 100%. So I'm not saying that it's okay. I'm just saying whatever meaning you give to something is going to create how you feel. And if you want to reconcile with your partner, if you want to create more love, create trust and get on the other side of it, you're going to have to tell a different story other than they betrayed me because you won't be able to get on the other side of it. But the rebuilding trust and getting on the other side of it is a whole 
topic in itself. So we'll we'll revisit that one. So let me ask you, what do you think is worse? Hmm. The cheating physically or emotional cheating? <gasps> oh, it's such a good question. <laughs> I'm I don't know. I, for me, for me personally, hmm. I would say uh, emotional. Hmm. I would have more of a problem if I found out you were having an emotional affair than a physical affair. Hmm. That's just me. Yeah, I, can, and, I can see that. And one of the, for me, the reason that that would bother me more is I value our connection and friendship so much that to think that you were sharing that with someone else would be bothersome to me. It would be like, well, why didn't you tell me you were doing that? And why aren't you doing that with me? I would go into the like, why are you not choosing me? And mm. that's kind of how we're programmed as women and, and the meaning that we give. Like earlier you were saying um, a lot of younger men were afraid to lock it down because they'll be stuck with one vagina. But as women, <laughs> <laughs> right, as women, we're like, but you should love the one vagina and you should want to be with the one vagina because that's what love is. Love is wanting this one <laughs> vagina for the rest of your life. Why don't you just want that? If you loved me, then you would just want it. <laughs> Uh, can't can all you with that? Can that's you, that's yeah, the can, perspective, that's, that's logic, right? Yeah. So that's <laughs> what creates that's what creates the pain and suffering because we believe that. But can, can I flip flip it on you a little bit? Mm -hmm. As women, we don't talk about this very much, but sometimes we think about being stuck with the same of penis for the rest of our lives. Of course, of course. Right? Yeah. And we're not getting the variety easy either. Right. But I feel like for some reason, for women, it's easier to accept that. And I think it's programming. We've been programmed to believe and want one partner and want monogamy. It has been sold to us that that's our value. A lot of our value comes from our ability to be in a monogamous relationship. Good point. You know, when it comes to this subject, you guys, and for the person that asked us, everyone makes bad choices at some point in their life. And if you have had a agreement with someone that you're going to be in a monogamous relationship and they go outside of that relationship, that is their bad. That is them trying to figure out them. That is them working out their stuff. And if you love them deeply and they're willing to work through it and look at themselves, I know you can get on the other side of it. And But if they're not willing to look at themselves and not willing to work through it and it becomes a serial occurrence in your relationship, then you have to ask yourself, Am I okay with this or am I choosing a monogamous relationship and this person is not? And they may not be the person for you. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's only a, it's a choice that people have to make individually. And, and that's something that's changed literally, like I said, over throughout history. Mm -hmm. There was this article that I was reading a while back. Right. And I think it was happening in Greece. Mm -hmm. One of the traditions was that every year at a certain time of year, mm -hmm. all of the women would go on top of this mountain mm -hmm. and they would leave their families or their husbands behind mm -hmm. and they would go up on top of this mountains and ha just have sex with each other with so other women, women with other women okay but then the women were also allowed to have and even in japan i read something about that before too that they were allowed to have multiple husbands mm. and so okay Throughout I don't, the, want, throughout I don't history, want another husband. It's, You're it's, a lot. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I'm good. I ain't mad at you. But it just the shows that it's to go to show that it, it's it changes. Yes. So it's not solidified like this is the only way. This is the only way. There's different ways of doing it. Yes. So earlier you you kind of touched on this, and I just find this fascinating and. Obviously, I know a lot of your stories because I've been hanging out with you for a minute. But I love when you talk about why marriage was created. The, I, I think this helps deal with the idea of infidelity when you understand what is marriage? Where did it come from? Ask questions, people. Question everything. Right. So, the, Where did marriage come from, Anthony? Well, the... <laughs> <laughs> 
So marriage first originated when it first started. It wasn't about love. Mm -hmm. It was about reproduction and it was about dowries. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why people, let's say, for example, the ring, the wedding ring, the wedding ring didn't start off as a wedding ring. It started off as like a, what is that around the neck? A collar. A collar around the neck because women were considered property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was to show that that was ownership, that collar around your neck. Right. And then for, over time, it went from that to the finger. Mm -hmm. So about, the whole, the ring around the fingers, infinity, yeah. and it's connected to the vein that connects to your heart so that uh, it I mean, they add that. Love. They threw that in there later on <laughs> to, to sell it, oh, but okay. it wasn't right. really Oh, that. that's the De Beers uh, ad? Right. Okay, go ahead. The jewelry ad. The jewelry ad. Okay, And so, for example, like when people see like in a wedding, Mm -hmm. And why do you have the bride, the grooms and the, and the bridesmaids? bridesmaids? Yeah. So the whole purpose of the grooms was that what they would do is that they would kidnap the woman mm -hmm. from her village. Then they would take her back and they would hide her and they would, you know, let's hurry up, let's get this wedding going because once we marry her, she's ours. Right. And then we get the, the, dowry, the dowry, the land. Right. Then her people would come looking for her. Mm -hmm. So the the groomsmen were there to guard her so that she doesn't escape uh -huh. and to fight in case her people came to save her, to, to rescue take her, her, to rescue her. Mm -hmm. And so the groomsmen dressed up like the, the groom, the groom in order to throw them off if mm -hmm. they did come. So they didn't, like, know which which, they didn't know who was who. Right. And then the bridesmaid was the same way. Mm -hmm. The bridesmaids were there to... In case the families came for her, they wouldn't know which one was her, right. and it would give her time to them time to escape with the actual bride. Right. So it was all like a deception, like a trick. Mm -hmm. They would even hide weapons under the church, waiting just in case that stuff happened. Wow. So the concept, it's man-made. It's changed over time. Yes. But it was not about love. It was not about any of those things yes. like that. So I, I really like that you share like the origin of marriage because we have all these beliefs around it and most people don't even know why it was started. Yeah, it's the Roman church. It was really about money. It was about um, bringing families together for so that they could share land. It was so many things. It wasn't love. Like no. marriage was never intended to be about love. We've made it into that. We've commercialized it and made it into that. Right. But that is not the origin of it. Right. And, and even with people, when they got married, the, the Romans, you know, they're the ones that take responsibility for this. Mm -hmm. And that's why romance. Yes. They call it romance. Mm -hmm. Romance means to be Roman-like. Right. And so when you're being romantic, you're being Roman-like. <laughs> We got to, you know, wrap it up here, but I just want to leave you with this. It is the hard things in marriage. It is the struggles. It is the disconnects. It is the pain that creates the love. It is the pressure that creates the love if you are willing to move through that pressure system together and to learn to understand yourself and each other more. You'll find more love and compassion for one another. And you'll always be on point if you just follow what we broke down earlier always choose peace of mind <laughs> so, over peace of ass i told them to write basic, it down and put it on their refrigerator basic, in down. the car yeah. <laughs> everywhere it'll make your life much much better yes and if and if you feel like you know what uh, monogamy doesn't work for you be honest yes be honest just say no thank you that's right you can have what you can you can have it this is a buffet these days you can you have can any have dish in a buffet you that like. you want you can do it any way you want yes so on that note on that note it's time to go that was fun that was a really good topic yeah that was good you that know good. um good. i know people also want to know how to um, rebuild trust after they've had this experience so let's do a podcast on that that'll be next I'm down for that. Let's down do for that. that? Let's yeah. do that. I love getting tips on how to get on the other side of things. So yes, um, that is it for today. We love you guys. Love you guys. Uh, getting Michelle. so much great feedback. Thank you so much for following us and spreading the love and sharing our podcast. Please continue to do that. Please continue to follow us. Let us know what you need from us. We are sending 
you all love from our heart and we appreciate you being part of our love revolution that's right and don't forget to get a copy of our book crack the code the secrets to achieving your happily ever after available on amazon.com yes all right you guys have a great week and we will talk to you next time all right people there you go we gave it to you now what you gonna do with it